All right. So today I thought I would do something slightly different. I would like to do a tier list kind of thing, but not in the regular sense. Because I don't think comparing each warband to each other warband makes a lot of sense, I guess. It's just gonna make things a bit more uh, categorized or organized, I guess. So I'm gonna actually rate them in side brackets instead. And the first bracket I have um, created here is called Elite Warbands, or Three Fighter Warbands, basically. Next up, I have made a category of four fighter warbands. And the next bracket here, I put five plus fighter warbands. And uh, we have quite a few of them as well. And the last category is also five plus fighter warbands. This is madness, you may say. But in the last category, I've also put the caveat that this needs to be resible fighters. So I have one category with five plus fighter warbands. And then I have one category with five plus fighter warbands with resible fighters. So, four categories. Three fighter warbands, four fighter warbands, five plus fighter warbands, five plus fighter warbands with resurrectable or summonable, summonable fighters. So let's start from the bottom. Five plus fighter warbands with resible fighters. In the bottom here, I put Eyes of the Nine. This is purely down to their inspired mechanic being very hard and the fact that their fighters are quite frail. Both the Sangur and the two ranged fighters, Norvi and Turush, are extremely squishy. Two or three wounds each and just one single defense type. And uh, yeah, hard to inspire as well. And the leader needs to succeed with not only a spell, but actually the spell attack to inspire. So quite hard to inspire. They do have the blue horror, which is probably one of the strongest fighters you can summon, really. Because you have to kill him twice to actually get any glory out of him. And he can hold objectives and all that stuff. So he's probably the best summonable fighters of the bunch. Just of pure flexibility. Not of out of damage output, but that doesn't really make up for the innate weakness of the warband. I do think that Narvi and Tush should definitely be level 1 wizards just to make the warband more fun and lore-wise uh, more appealing, I guess. Next up, I put Sepulchral Guard. I do think they bleed too much glory to be any way higher, although they can really be a menace when the champion inspires and uh, goes to town with three hammers, cleave and two damage. I think their own objective deck uh, upgrades employees are not strong enough to bring them up any higher on this list and the fact that they only have two move. Spite Claw Swarm, next up, uh, middle of the road. They are still pretty decent and um, they have been hit with the expendable and uh, black anger I think being restricted, but they do still perform. They are a fast warband, you can play pretty flexy with them, and they have a quite quite a potential. Their own deck though is not strong at all. And there's not much for me to take. Next up we have a Grimwatch, a um, warband that's traditionally been very very strong and still perform good. They have been hit somewhat by the fact that objective deck objective play is not that strong anymore. But they can work around it, I think, and uh, they can still uh, be very good weapon caddies and they have one of the strongest uh, race mechanics in the game. You don't really have to waste an action to race, it just happens at the start of the round and they uh, do have a ploy for it as well. And pair that with partial resurrection and you are, have reses all round and that the boss can rest as well. So, still very strong warband, although their objective deck has been hit. At the top, though, of this group, I have put Elothai and Soul Raid. They don't have any resible fighters in that sense. You have to kill someone to bring back um, the Thrall. You have to kill someone with a leader to bring back the Thrall, which I now have forgotten the name of, but never mind. And you can summon the fish as well, and the fish is one of the strongest fighters in the game without really being a fighter. Just for the fact that he's a nuisance and he can shut down glory for your opponent. 
or set up glory for yourself and just being really annoying with the ploys coupled to him and l -Tags do have a couple of decent objects, objective searches their end phase is somewhat lackluster the ploys and upgrades have uh, definitely have some, some strong stuff in there but so yeah i do think they should be on top of the resible fighter group here so moving on to the five plus fighter warbands i put garrix in the bottom here they can still perform obviously if you do pure carnage and the corn cares not and uh, i mean the punching up kind of stuff can still i mean you can still bring down your opponent with them so i mean i have been beat by them several times so they are certainly not unplayable i don't think any warband is but i mean you have to rate them somehow and i do think they should be uh, in the bottom here because there, there are just other teams that do basically the same stuff but better grashrex for example do similar stuff to them and can play other types of um, play styles as well so uh, next up i put more wet's blade coven um a bit of a weird one it came out at the same time as Morgox Crashers, but just way weaker. A lot of their objective stuff uh, requires you to kill stuff. Um, they have two very strong fighters with the leader and the snake lady. High accuracy. But the other guys are really just bleeding glory. Uh, so yeah, I think the fact that the search objectives are lacking. They don't really have any, any passive glory. Um, I think they should probably be very close to the bottom here. Next up I put Grashrex. Still uh, it's the same thing there, they do bleed a lot of glory with uh, Gnarl and uh, Ushkor and uh, uh, Korsh just being one dodge, two, two wounds, I mean, they will bleed. But they can at least score out of bleeding. It's hard to take pure carnage for m more grits because you only start with five fighters and you might just end up one shy of actually achieving that. So, And they don't have an infection card for dying as well. So I think um, yeah, Russia should just edge more grits here. Next up I put black powders. I would like to see them higher up. I don't think they should be actually. I mean they might get stronger as the season progresses but as of now I have a hard time seeing them perform really good. Uh, championship wise and I mean rivals wise they are pretty atrocious as well their own objectives is kind of hard to score and their upgrades oh my god they are so crappy it's just it's just all over the place the upgrades doesn't really help the searches and yeah I don't, I don't know it does not seem like a cohesive gang at all and they also bleed a lot of glory next up I put scathes high movement Decent damage output. I mean, certainly semi frail uh, fighters here. But a uh, couple of decent objectives, actually. And um, some strong ploys. So I do think they deserve to be above Black Paradise. Next up, I put Thunderix. For the fact that you can actually use Glory Seeker and Fights Ferocity makes Thunderix and uh, Fast Riders a bit stronger now. And Eagle Eye certainly helps them as well, and they have a very interesting inspired mechanic, which isn't that hard. A couple of good search objectives that score, score and inspire stuff, and pretty durable as well. I do like playing Thunderix. I do. You can perform pretty good. I mean, if you take objective stuff and play passively with them, you just force your, the opponents to come to you and you just blow them up point blank. I do think they can still perform pretty good. Next up I put Gab Swan Hunt. Maybe they should have been behind Thurn Hendrix. I, I, maybe they basically equal in power level by uh, Gab Swan Hunt. Do have some pretty interesting ploys with uh, Dark Destiny. Uh, no, that's probably the only ploy that's interesting, but they do have a very good upgrade, which is just plus one wound, plus one dice. We're crying you, we're requiring you to have an upgrade before you play that, but it's still very good. A good inspired mechanic also, also you just need to apply an upgrade. Not an illusion upgrade, but any other upgrade to inspire a fighter. Next up I put Sarbak Skids. They inspire pretty fast. 
and do punching up type of aggro really well. Probably slightly better than God's One Hunt actually. And they can also play the objective route, which God's One Hunt is uh, probably a, a fighter shy of doing very well and too frail. So I think it's also inspired to two dodge on most fighters, so they are just more durable. Next up I put Starblood Stalkers, which is... They are just innately stronger fighter cards wise and Starbucks gets and you can play similar to them. And they're very good ploy cards and a couple of decent objective cards, although one has been restricted now. And next up, Thorns of the Bright Queen. Strong inspired mechanics, strong fighters, uh, the ever hanged, uh, lady, uh, the lady herself, and um, Warclaw and the push. Although restricted now, or nerfed, I should say, they are still a menace to handle sometimes. Uh, next up, I put Rothgorn. He probably was one peg higher up before this meta, but I do think he has been hit somewhat with all the restrictions to his fight, his, his uh, own objectives and uh, fight uh, upgrades and, and stuff like that. So. Uh, still very accurate when inspired and the fact that he tweets everyone of their his opponents as quarries can also work in his favor although not as much as it did in b square and number two from the top here is cutting crew they have an extremely easy inspired mechanic and they can just pair up the more demeanor with the other card which does the same thing attack with a Two supporting fighters. You, they actually have two fighters that count as two supporting fighters so the fact that they can score those simultaneously and good fighter stats all over. Um, pretty durable, the leader from five wounds and the lieutenant of four. Yeah, very good. So easy to set up support with them. So I do think they should be slightly above Rothgar in, in this current meta. On the top here though, Canis Reapers, they do bleed a lot of glory, but they have two of the strongest fighters with Kane and Kenta. And great objectives and great upgrades with the unnerving synchrony, which is just crazy. So I do think they deserve to be on top. Four fighting warbands at the bottom, shows an access, two low movement and two hard inspired mechanic. Not really any good upgrades. Very very decent ploys, but not not great objectives. Uh, possibly the objective for being in enemy territory in any end phase is decent, but the other stuff is not good. Um, I mean, very strong fighter when inspired leader and um, Tefk, but otherwise, you know, they, they are not really playable at this day and age. But I still try from time to time, but uh, most of the time I don't have a good time. Uh, number two from the bottom, I put Storm of Celestus. They've got hit pretty hard with the fact that standing on objectives is a bit harder now. And they, if they want to score their own objectives, which is basically after an opponent's activation, you should hold this and this objective. The fact that they can't use the Gloom side to help them to stand there while being attacked. And then, yeah, it just doesn't synergize very well with this season. And the fact that you can only shoot once and only inspire when uh, success seeding and a range of three attack. I do think that the uh, Griffon's reaction is pretty strong though, if you clump them up in a big group and just give everyone a guard token, but uh, I don't really think they should be anywhere higher up than that. Number three from the bottom, I, I put Iron Skull's boys. I do think they... Uh, have benefited from everyone being a brawler and the fact that unfazed is pretty good for them now and some decent ploys i mean like brutal cunning cunning brutal that kind of stuff uh, but i mean other apart from that they are not good uh, they have too lo low movement and needs to get hurt before inspiring which is kind of weird the Thoris guardian next up they've gotten a slight boost will reclaim the lamentary going uh, up in power here with the gloom uh, gloom season Reclaim the Lamentaries when you hold every objective in uh, one or more opponents. Uh, one or more sides of the board, uh, basically. Uh, they have two s decent search objectives with uh, two reactions or two, two spells in a round. And, uh, yeah. 
should definitely be above Iron Skulls. Next up, I put the Molochs. Should pretty close to the bottom here because he's just got pretty, pretty hardly no, pretty hardly, pretty hard nerf to him with his reroll being restricted as well, which was kind of. Agree with that one, but and the fact that he can't double charge uh, or super action twice. Um, Kagras Ravagers got hit by this season and they were ne never really that strong. Uh, slightly above Monog though, because they are still a new warman and their own objectives are better than his. So. Lady Harrows uh, in the middle of the road here with four fighter warbands. Uh, I mean, a season or so back, I would have put them probably near the top because. You know, the speed package and the fact that their uh, one will and uh, fleet memories or whatever it's called was really, really easy be before the objective started face down. You basically had six um, search objectives that you could just score uh, auto in every game, and then you had the third end phase card for scoring the most objectives. So, but they are not in the same spot anymore. Yes, but the fact that the speed package is gone, except for winning death. And the fact that those two objectives are a lot, lot, have decreased in power a lot. Next up, Megora's Fiend. They always just perform good. If you go, want to go hard aggro, clean kills, bubble deeds, dominant display, they can score that uh, triumvirate very good. And they have strong fighter cards with good attacks and accuracy. And the reaction to hit back as well. So um, maybe not. I mean, the deck is. Pretty lackluster, but um, yeah, just the fighters um, in and of itself, and the inspired mechanic is pretty decent as well. So, Mayoris next up, strong flex warband, suffer somewhat from just being three wounds, but they make up for it in the defense, especially now that gloom is a fact. And you yes, you can just play them in lots of different ways, and pretty decent objectives, strong ploys, uh, upgrades wise, so so. Sandai's Truth Seekers next up. Strong reactions. Uh, weird warband though. You have to die with a storm cost to inspire. Uh, but they have some really strong search objectives, I think. Which should be easy to score. And also some very easy end phase objectives like having a charge token not being adjacent to an enemy fighter. Yeah. Dread Pageant next up. They are also a strong flex warband. But do flex a bit better, I think, than Mayoris. Uh, like God Seekers are really strong end phase as well, and they can they have their own card for holding more than the opponent, which couples off with dominant uh, with the uh, uh, dominant position. But very good. Next up, number three from the top here, I put Head Crackers, strong search objectives, strong fighter cards, except for the Archer, uh, Kings of Primacy. Uh, some really good upgrades and some decent ploys to just manipulate the uh, primacy. Should be able to hold a, a primacy for most of the rounds with them. Um, I do think I've scored my entire deck with them actually one time. and So they are strong. They are not as strong though I would argue as Crimson Court, which I will put second here. They do both the passive play with the hunger very well. You can just play score your entire deck with them. You won't have super, super high glory, but you will have very reliable glory. Or you can go aggro and be super accurate with that as well. In most games you will perform. Uh, sometimes your dice will fail you and you will not, but they have strong objectives uh, that you always score basically. Spirited Attempt, Crimson Hounds um, and super Supernatural Speed, I think it's called. Uh, so yeah, and good upgrades and ploys. Yeah, Strong woman. Very good fighter cards. Next up, Drepers, Wraith Creepers, and that's the top of the bunch here for the four fighter warbands. They are very, very strong, very accurate, and the fact that you can somewhat with a push, although now nerfed, get two, three, or even four attacks off with an inspired fighter hitting for three hammers with a reroll for two damage without any upgrades is just mind boggling. I think before this season and the nerf, they were broken. Now you can play them with a good conscience, but uh, they still is, in my opinion, top of the four fighter warband bunch. Moving on to the elite warbands. In the bottom here, I put Steel Out Champion, just for the fact that their own deck is uh, atrocious. Possibly with the acceptance, uh, with the exception of the uh, 
make a statement uh, card that they have. Uh, cleanse, whatever it's called. And if you couple up that with uh, make a statement, then you actually score that at 6 uh, glory in the end phase. But that's, that's a niche play, but yeah. Just a, t a tangent there. Uh, but I mean, they have decent inspired mechanic and strong fighter cards, but they only have three movement and the rest of the deck is not good. So they're gonna be on the bottom here. Next up, I've put Fast Riders. They can perform decent here with Glory Seeker, Eagle Eye, and Fights Ferocity. Possibly also Arm to the Teeth, which gives you a cleave if you have a range, range three. And there was this new objective where you should have uh, two hunters in edge hexes in enemy territory. And the fact that they are now all hunters, maybe that's a good card for them, I don't know. Uh, but they are still fairly weak. I mean, their own deck is not good. You don't really have any, any good end phase in their own deck. And the search objectives are not good either. So. Next up, I put Storm Size Curse Breakers, also a Storm Cost Warband here in the bottom. I mean, they have traditionally not been very good in this game. I mean, Storm Size had this spell in Night World where they actually were top of the bunch when magic was a thing. Now it isn't though. They do have a good objective with the Harness to Storm. Uh, and the fighter cards are pretty decent. I mean,. The lady there hits for three hammers, three damage, which is very, 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 very respectable. Um, but they don't really have any good searches apart from the Harness the Storm, and the upgrades are very, very poor. And yeah, not really any good ploys either. Iron Soul Condemners, though, they have a much stronger deck. They came out uh, not in B Square, but in uh, Dread Fane, which was basically B Square side expansion there with Lady Harrows and that that time Lady Harrows was much stronger now I do think they are similar in power uh, they still suffer from the three movement of the Stormcast team but they have lots of more tools in their toolbox than the other Stormcast teams with three fighters at least so they're just like Steel Arts 2.0 next up I put Worm Spat their own objective deck isn't that hot, neither for the end phase or the search objectives, but they fight the cards and the fact that they can soak damage pretty well, and uh, both, both Gulgok and uh, Sepsimus uh, being real beasts of a fighters. Um, I think the same goes for Worms, but that goes for um, Megors. Basically, you can take the clean kills and you can take the, the bold deeds and stuff like that. So. And the fact that you only have to get three in uh, enemy territory makes those cards even more uh, reliable. A couple of decent ploys and a couple of decent upgrades. So, so their own deck isn't that strong, but the fighters uh, themselves are pretty strong actually. So I think they do deserve to be just above Iron Soul Condemners. Next up, and in the second spot of the Elite Fight Warbands, I put Morgox Crushes. Possibly they should have been number one before this season, but I do think after the now what and gutted boss nerf, um, which is just a passive glory, which made passive play for them really reliable, especially like with something like master battle and uh, yeah, and team effort as well. You just play those cards before and played super passive with them, and then as soon as someone came to you, you just ate them up. So I mean, that's a boring playstyle, but it was very reliable. Uh, that's more or less gone now. Uh, so I do think Ripas is the top of the bunch when it comes to elite warbands here. Uh, they have the high movement. They have a very respectable own deck. They have good damage output. Not as high, possibly as Morgok reliably, but I mean they have the potential to do four, four, four damage in one charge. Um, and I mean the place that will just charging in Ripa, uh, possibly killing someone, and then as soon as he sees the target, and the other two inspired. I mean, yeah, the playstyle is pretty, pretty good. If it's fun, I don't know, uh, but it it's still I think they do deserve to be just above Morgox uh, as it stands right now. 
So there you have it. So the top of the bunch for the firefighters, warbands with the reversible fighters. I put Elephant Soul Raid. I think it's hard to argue with that. Five plus fighter warbands without reversible fighters. Canons comes comes out on top. Cannon and crew second there. Four fighter warbands, Drepper's Wraith Creepers, followed by Crimson Court. Elite warbands, three fighter war warbands, basically. Uh, I put Reapers first and Morgok second. So there you have it. So yeah, this was interesting, I guess, to to rate them in this fashion. Not really compare. It's hard to compare like Sepulchral Guard to Morgox because it's just two completely different teams with very different mechanics. So I think comparing them this way made more sense. If it makes the most sense, I don't know. Maybe I mean you could do a rating based on season, based on faction. I mean you can rate them in so many different ways. This was how I chose to do it, and I hope that it was somewhat interesting at least to watch my ramblings here uh, so if you enjoy our content and uh, like what we do here please hit the like button uh, maybe just hit a comment here with uh, your thoughts on uh, what I got wrong and what I got right and please consider subscribing to our channel here so without further ado take care